All right. What do we start with me, me giving them the finger? No, we shouldn't start with that. We should not it's give too late yeah, now. It's too late so. now. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to our live stream. Uh, we're here with Chef Itamar, uh, one of our close friends, and he's going to be cooking some chicken and potatoes. Basically. Chicken potatoes, yeah, and uh, throw a little curveball in there for fun. You want some hand sanitizer? Please, thank you. Oh, oh it's social. a little yeah social yeah social distancing thing. Like there we go. Hi, everybody. Uh, so. Real quick, uh, what I want to do first, for sure, is I want to thank Kitchen Collective for letting us do this here. Um, you know, they've been very, it's very awesome of them to kind of open this space up to us so that we can work with chefs and showcase chefs and, you know, um, keep them busy and working because right now, we're not. We're probably not, right? <laughs> we're so, now, um, we're really not. Real quick too, if you're watching this, go ahead and share it uh, on your Facebook and, and uh, let your friends know you're watching it. Um, not just Facebook, Instagram, whatever, share YouTube. Share whatever you can. Share. Yeah, share it all around. Yes, and then, um, yeah, we. Uh, I just wanna say, this is gonna be a weekly thing. So every Saturday around this time, we're gonna bring in a new chef who's gonna cook something with you while you follow. We'll, put, uh, we'll post the recipes online, give you a date and a time so that you can get those ingredients and get yourself set up to cook all the ingredients all of the things that we cook will be something you can do in your home oven a conventional oven i'm just reading that <laughs> or in the wood fired oven so um you know it's gonna and it's gonna be simple right because right now is not the time to go to the grocery store with right now is the time to go to the grocery store and list. grab two things and get out exactly of so you know we're gonna give you a base of like hey and stay know, away from grandma kosher salt olive oil vegetable oil some basic stuff and then when you go to shop it'll just be like a chicken and potatoes yep chicken that's all took me a total of three minutes in the store today perfect so hopefully and you know uh and even then if you go to get a chicken and they don't have any grab a Grab a steak. fish. Grab, Grab a steak. whatever. It's going to be something that easy, yeah. you, whatever it is. Yeah, the idea is to keep it simple. Um, so basically, uh, you can see behind us, the fire is kind of raging right now. By the time we get to cooking, it, the fire will die down, but the oven will be hot. So if you're at home and you don't have a Forno Piombo wood-fired oven, um, get an order. But if you don't have room for one, um, then get your oven at 425. Um, yeah, conventional oven. Conventional you know. oven, yeah. convection, whatever. Hot oven. So regular oven usually starts at about 350. We're going to go 425, even 450 if you feel brave enough to do that. I recommend. Um, the fire is going. We have about 20 minutes till we get that going. Right, and we should mention that that we have about another 20 minutes of prep before we're actually. Going yeah, we're going to show oven, everything. Just so if you need to adjust your time in your oven and your temp stuff like that. So. Let's go prep. Yeah. So you guys are going with Itamari to take you to the kitchen for prepping. So get your, all of your Follow me. So we're going to start off with washing our hands. And apparently for a lot of people, it was a new concept that washing your hands is, is a thing that they should be doing. Um, not saying whoever's watching this, but you might have a friend who was surprised at how, how often you have to wash your hands and how well you want to do it. So you really want to scrub your hands well. Um, hot, warm water, as hot as you can take it. Um, and then dry them out and wipe them clean. Um, so you always want to have nice, clean hands I'm when you work. I'm going to sneak by you here. The, social distancing. Six feet? Six feet. Now we are at six feet. Good. There we go. So, Basically, what we're going to be doing today is a simple spatchcock chicken um, that we're going to cook in a very hot oven. If you, as I said, if you don't have a wood oven, that's fine. Um, just use your, hot, your regular oven. So, chicken. Um, being such a simple recipe, having a good chicken makes a difference. Um, this one is all the cliches of Northern California and Napa Valley chicken. It's grass, it's free range, grass fed, no antibiotics, none of that. So it's a really good chicken. It's gonna be very tasty. So take not your best knife, but not a bad knife either. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take the backbone out. Okay, we're gonna take two bones in total out, the backbone and the wishbone. Um, I'm gonna start off with the wishbone and 
just make a small incision right here, um, right on the outside of the wishbone, and see a, just a small incision, just like so. Then I put my fingers in and I pull it out. And just like this, we have the wishbone out. That's gonna make carving the chicken later on much easier. Now, taking a nice knife, not the nicest knife, not like the one handmade Japanese knife that your grandma bought you for your whatever. Just cut along one side of the backbone. Then it's an awkward angle, but I'm gonna try and show it this way. Just cutting along this and then cutting the backbone out. Okay, save that for stock, for sauce, for whatever it is that you wanna do. Now, we have a spatchcock chicken. Next step is pressing down till you hear a sickening sound of the breastplate breaking, okay? And by doing that, we're gonna have a much more even cooking surface um, that will allow us to cook the chicken faster and more evenly. So this, the thighs will cook in about the same time as the breast, even though the breast is bigger, uh, the thighs need a bit of a higher temperature, so that'll be fine. Um, another option to do, you can, uh, uh, you can French the wings if you want to, but I don't see the point. I'm gonna wash my hands again, because I touched raw chicken. Beautiful. And seasoning it liberally with salt. I hope you guys are seeing, this is kosher salt. Diamond Crystal is my preferred, um, my preferred brand. Um, sponsor me, please. Um, and I'm seasoning this very, very liberally. Now, the hand that doesn't touch the salt, flipped, and that does touch the salt, seasons the other side. Now, at this point, if you want to go heavy on herbs, thyme, garlic, uh, lemon peel, black pepper, white pepper, um, chimichurri, whatever seasoning you want to put, this is the point, okay? We want this season, this flavors to go on now. Um, if, you don't, if you don't want any additional flavors, if you just want to go pure chicken, um, just salt is fine. So, I get a cast iron pen, and I'm gonna put the chicken down like so. Then, some cracked black pepper. Freshly cracked, so I don't need a lot of it. And our chicken is done, okay? Well, it's not cooked yet, but it will be done uh, prep-wise. Next step. We're gonna look at potatoes. Now, I've done this recipe the other day at a friend's house. We were just there for a random dinner and we weren't planning on doing anything. And they're like, oh shoot, let's do dinner. And they just said some you can go potatoes. And I'm like, okay, well, let's cook some potatoes. So we got the oven hot. And while the oven was getting hot, we got the potatoes in cold water. And it's important to cook, when you cook potatoes in water, or even if you roast them in the oven, starting with a cold, cold water or, um, or co a cold oven really helps uh, in potatoes. Um, I have a theory about it, it's not scientifically proven, but what I think is that uh, the starches on the outside um, don't cook faster than the starches on the inside when it all cooks together. So, a lot of salt in the water. I mean a lot. And high heat and we're gonna let it boil basically till they're tender. Um, in the meanwhile, we get rid of the messy cutting board. Excuse me, Vince. And I'm gonna put this to the side. Do we know if we have any questions thus far? Um, okay, while we wait, because we're waiting on water to boil quite literally, I'm gonna put something that we didn't put in the description of it earlier but I'm gonna do it nonetheless. So, one of the advantages of this forced isolation that we are all in is that I get to play around with stuff that I don't usually do. 
So the reason that we didn't give you the recipe for this is because this is only the second time that I'm doing it. But I baked one loaf today and it came out great, so I'm showing you guys how to do it. I have 1,000 grams of bread flour in here. Okay? Um, King Arthur, whatever, organic, that's the last bag that they had at Whole Foods, so that's what I'm using. I have 800 grams of water, and I am mixing the two. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a quick spoon here. I'll be back in a second. Sorry if I made a lot, a lot of sounds right now. There we go. And we are mixing the two. And we're just mixing them, okay? We're not kneading, we're not doing anything fancy to them. Um, which camera, this one? Let's do this one. So basically I'm just mixing the two. Um, nothing fancy, just getting one cohesive well, not even that cohesive. Um, just one big dough. And now we're starting what's called odalies. So for those of you who are triggered by gluten, this is not for you. But when we mix flour and water, we develop gluten. And gluten is good for bread, because that's what allows um, the air, the air pockets to, to be formed. So we're going to let this sit for about 20, 30 minutes. Then we're going to add some sourdough starter and some salt. But right now, it's just letting the gluten develop all by itself. So now would be the time for questions. I'm going to wash my hands again. Do we have any questions? Someone's asking what kind of bread you're making. Maybe going through things that you're just started. Okay, so basically I'm making a sourdough bread. The simplest of breads. All it has, in essence, all that there is to it is um, flour, water, salt. Okay, sourdough starter is a naturally occurring thing that uh, when we mix flour and water in equal parts um, and we let them sit, the naturally occurring bacteria all around us um, start working on that, on those two things and just inhabit them. And if we're lucky, and a lot of times we are lucky, most channels are that you are lucky, um, we will get naturally occurring yeast in there. And those naturally occurring yeast are gonna start fermenting. And by adding that to the flour and water that we already have, we start to, um, to ferment the, the dough. Um, from that one recipe that I just showed you, you can make baguettes, you can make a boule, which is a ball. You can make um, a lot of different doughs and a lot of different shapes, and that's what really defines the difference. I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna talk to, to that camera for now. Um, wide camera. Wide camera, copy. Um, I'm good at this. Um, so yeah, you can make whatever dough you want from there. Um, this is a very, very simple, basic sourdough bread that, you know, at this time, if you haven't baked bread before, this is how you start. Super simple, super easy, and doesn't require a lot of, a lot of attention. Please give me more questions before I start telling jokes. I'm horrible at jokes. Um, what's going on with the potatoes? Oh yeah, so we're doing our, so some people came on late, so yeah. can you do a general yes. recap? Yes, general recap, what we have done thus far. Sure, so um, in here, we have potatoes. We started them off in cold water uh, with lots of salt, and we're just waiting for them to come to a boil. Once they come up, um, and they're, they're knife tender, they're not fork tender, okay? So difference is um, that when we go in with a knife, and we come out, the knife is sharper, so it's much easier to go through. We're not looking for the potatoes to be just like falling apart, like this is the best potato yet, because uh, we're gonna roast them in the oven later. Right now, what we're looking for them is just to be cooked through. So when we go um, to roast them in the oven, we're just putting a crisp on them and finishing the cooking. We don't want to let the oven, um, especially that hot of an oven, to cook the potatoes all the way through because it will burn them. Um, and if potatoes burn, they're not, they're not good eats. Um, sorry, Alton, for stealing your, your trademark. Um, and then we also have a spatchcock chicken here. Um, it's a chicken that we 
took the backbone out, we took the wishbone out, and we're just gonna let it, uh, right now it's just sort of dry brining. It's a step that, that if, I don't know if it makes any sense, but basically we have salt on them, on the chicken, and it's kind of seasoning it all the way through, so the chicken's gonna be nice and tender and juicy uh, when we come to roast it. Uh, the reason that we spatchcocked it is that it will allow in a higher temperature oven, same with the potatoes, to cook faster. Uh, we don't want, uh, the problem when you still have the chicken whole is that the cavity um, requires a long time to, to heat up just because it's, it's a chamber in the middle that's empty that needs to be heated up for no good reason. So by eliminating the cavity, we allow for a more even cooking surface, uh, more surface area uh, to be exposed to heat, and that gives us a quicker cooking on the chicken, leaving it moist and juicy, and I hate the word moist. It's a horrible word. It's a good word. No, it's a horrible word. Are you kidding? Come on, moist? Please, moist. It's like, any, any sound, oi? Whenever you make the oi, it's, it's a bad sound. So oink's a good sound. Oink. Oink. Like oink. oink. No, that's the it's the worst sound that an animal makes. Oink. Like, really? Oink couldn't come up. Wolf makes great sound. Oh, that's a good sound. And it, most other animals make great sounds. Oink is a horrible sound. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potatoes are boiling. <laughs> Let's stop talking about oink. Um, so potatoes are boiling. And we're lowering the heat a bit, but we're basically at a low boil. Okay, so we have rolling boil. That's like the water is really, really hot. Um, and then just a high simmer, low boil is where we're going now. And in about five minutes, these potatoes are going to be cooked through. So using my other knife, because that knife had chicken on it, um, I'm starting to check them. And they're not quite there. You see it still sticks. But they're getting there. So in probably... Five minutes, we'll be ready to, to go with those potatoes. Um, do we have any other questions? How many viewers do we have right now? How many viewers, Mario? 33. 33, okay, well that's, that's good, that's a good number. Um, it's, it's better than two. Are there any new questions? Are there any new questions? No new questions, okay. Well, so I'm gonna talk about what, what the coronavirus has done to our industry in the meanwhile, um, which is, is less way, way less fun. Um, to talk about, but is a real thing. Um, so, Napa Valley as a whole, and Blossom, the company that I work with um, specifically, are built on hospitality. And hospitality doesn't work without people. And once, once news of this horrific virus came, um, our industry was grind, was, basically grind it down to a halt and where all our employees are, are out of work. Um, we, had to, we had to let go of everybody and our friends who are in the hospitality, whether at restaurants or, or hotels or anything related to the fact that we had a lot of people come to the valley and no longer come, um, are out of work. and. The financial reality of it is, is horrible because bills can't be paid and rent is, no one knows where it's gonna come from and mortgages and, and car treatment and all that stuff, we, we don't know where that's gonna come from. And that's bad, that's really, really bad. But, but for me, and I was talking about that earlier today, um, you know, when, when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life that's really bullshit. You, you end up working 24 seven and, and you take everything super personal. But because you take everything super personal, the reward of doing what you love and enjoying your work is tremendous. And not being able to, to do what we love and to entertain and host and shower people with, with the experience of, of being in the Napa Valley um, I think that's the thing that, that drives, I'm gonna say us as an industry, up the walls the most, because right now we, we just want the people. You know, it's, the money is really important, yes, but it's, it's showing how this beautiful part of the world is and, and what it's like and, and how, to, how to enjoy it and, and sharing the experience. That's the biggest part. And, 
it's hard. It's really hard. And I don't, I hope this blows a by fast. I really do. But, but when, when you have the chance, come back to Napa Valley. Come back to wine country. Go back to those restaurants. Go back to the bars. Go and tell the people that you appreciate them. And you know what? They, just tell them, hey, let, let, do your thing. Let them host you. Let them entertain you. Let them be who they are. Because right now, I think that's the biggest thing about Napa Valley is that they're not, this whole virus is not letting us be who we are because we are hospitable. That's what we do. And by not being hospitable, by keeping six feet apart, and by keeping everybody away, the morale is low. That's the biggest thing. It's not, it's not about, yes, it is about the money. The money is important. But it's not just the money. It's an entire industry that, I mean, this place that we're in, Kitchen Collective, and it's a beautiful place. It's a hustling and bustling place. And people come and, and cook here. And Kitchen Collective hosts in this kitchen. And right now, you, birds are chipping. That's all we're hearing. At this time of day, it's Saturday, 5 p.m., this place should be packed. And it's not. And that's the biggest thing. If, if you go to, I'm not talking, I mean, obviously the wineries that were closed, all the tasting rooms. Yonville Live was supposed to be, Taste of Yonville was supposed to have to end an hour ago. That was supposed to be 1,000 people. And they're not there now. And you can hear the birds chir chirping. And in March in Napa Valley, that's not supposed to be. And, and the people who are here are just because of that. Um, they're here to make it happen. So let's see how our potatoes are doing. <laughs> Didn't mean to be a downer. You guys were not asking questions. Ask questions. And There's a question. There's a question, yes. <laughs> Good. What are the most important talents or things that you can share that will make us better or greater cooks? Don't be afraid of salt. First, use the right salt, OK? That's the biggest thing. Go to wherever, buy diamond crystal. It's a three pound box. It's humongous. At home, it lasts me about a month and a half to two months. And I use a lot of salt. Um, and I cook a lot at home, um, sometimes even three months. So three and a half dollars for a three pound box, go get that. And don't be afraid of liberally salting things, OK? Go to. Three times oversalt something and then start scaling back. Because you'll be surprised at how far you can season something with salt, just increasing the flavor before you oversalt. Like, oh no, that's too, no, it's not too much salt. Then don't be afraid of high heat. You know, we're working today at 425 in a convention oven, 700, 750 in, in our wood oven. Don't be afraid of high heat. And the biggest thing to remember when you cook. And no matter what it is that you cook, is that worst case scenario, Domino's pizza is a phone call away. So that's the worst that can happen. You're going to order pizza in, and you're going to be fine. Okay? You messed up this beautiful, it doesn't matter. Okay? Add $10, and you have pizza for dinner, and, and that filet mignon is ruined. It's gone. You spent $150 on it, and it's gone. So what? That's the worst that can happen. right? And if you're not afraid of messing up, then you can, OK, I'm going to crank this up to 500 and see what happens. And all of a sudden, oh, wow, that's amazing. Or, oh, shoot, I forgot this pork in the smoker for 24 hours too long. Oh, wow, it came out beautiful. Or, shit, it came out like, like it's fucked up. There's nothing we can do. What's, what's the most expensive mistake you've made? The most expensive mistake I've made? Food related? <laughs> OK. Um, I think. I accidentally dropped a bucket of demi. That's about $600 worth. That was painful. And it's not just because it's, it's $600. It's, it's also, it takes about a week to make. So it's not something that you can just duplicate on the spot. Um, but that's, you shouldn't be making a bucket of a gallon and a half of demi. Uh, you shouldn't be in that place to begin with. Um, I don't think I've ever ruined anything. You know, I've burned shit. But it was what, $25, $50?
okay. It's not that, it's not that, I mean, don't get me wrong. Money doesn't grow in trees, don't mess up. But if you do, as a home cook, if, you're, if you come and work with us and you're in the middle of an event and you're burning my steaks, that's a different story. We're gonna have a different conversation on that one. But if you just come and, and you cook at home, $50? Let's say you spent a low before, and we, don't, we can't even have foie gras anymore. I mean, caviar you don't cook, so just serve it raw, that's fine. Oysters are not that expensive. Yeah, and not much you can mess up. It's pretty, pretty safe. The worst that can happen is you order Domino's. And yes, it sucks. I mean, don't get, I, I get it. It's sometimes you're like, this came out a little bad, and you just don't want to eat it, and that's fine. But sometimes you're gonna end up with something great. And the only way to get better is to do it again and again and again. So, yeah, don't, don't be afraid. That's the worst I've made is $600. That's the worst. And then I also made worse mistakes, not food related. Okay, potatoes are almost there. Almost, ah, so close. I'm gonna crank it up just so we can move along in this video. How are you checking those potatoes? Um, you wanna come closer? Yeah. I don't fall. Do not fall. So basically what I'm doing is I'm piercing them and I'm seeing how far along can I get without hitting like the, the place that I have to press more than a pound's worth of weight. So it's pressure. It's pressure. So we're almost there. Like I can almost make it past the middle. And once you make it past the middle, then you're gonna get all the way through. If we were doing this in oil, would it be a different technique? We could do it in oil, but then we would, so there are two options. Um, option one is deep frying them, which hell yeah, deep fry them. Um, option two is confining the potatoes in oil, uh, which is something that we used to do um, at La Folie, which unfortunately closed, shout out to Roland. Um, and if you confine them in oil, you put it in a much lower temperature. So this is right now at 212, because we're at almost sea level, and that's the temperature that water boils. Um, but if you go in a confit, you can go at 170. Um, and that would give, give you a much different result. It's gonna be much more even and way smooshier. Uh, deep frying them, uh, on the other hand, would go to a much higher temperature and would um, crisp the outside and get the inside nice and steamy. So sweet potato, uh, deep frying in essence is steaming it from the inside. This allows the water to penetrate from the outside. So um, another question we got was, what's your favorite dish to make in general? My favorite dish to make in general? Right now I'm really into bread, so I'm enjoying bread. Um, for me it's less about um, specific dishes and more about cuisines or ways of eating. So um, all of last summer, um, we did a pop-up of Israeli cuisine here in Napa, and it was all about the sharing table. So everybody, everything was served to the table um, at once, and everything was served family style. So you got to, and that was really fun because it really shows the farm to table concept um, that really can highlight. Because if you're serving 15 courses or 15 different dishes to the table and everything just comes from the farm, then some ingredients are super simple and you don't do much to them, and some are really intense and you do a lot to them. And it really shows the difference of what the farm can do in that time of year. So that's my favorite, is, is sharing, sharing a, a dinner. So we have a couple more questions. Yes, questions. Um, so another one is, could you boil the potatoes in um, the pizza oven or in a wood-fired oven? And then the other question was, why is cooking at high heat so ideal? So yes, you could boil them in the, in the wood oven. The issue with boiling, boiling anything in the wood oven is that the heat comes from all around instead of just from below. So your evaporation is much higher. Uh, you lose much more evaporation uh, you lose much more to evaporation when you boil something in the wood oven. That's why when you make risotto in the wood oven, um, you need to add probably, um, on any, every cup of rice, you need to almost add 20 cups of water uh, when you make risotto in the wood oven because the heat comes from all around. Right now, the heat on, in here comes from just underneath and keeps the water there. Um, why the high heat? So Maillard reaction, which to, to make it short, 
is what things what makes things tasty um, is is a function of temperature over time okay so each ingredient has a different um, caramelizing temperature and over what period of time so uh, powdered milk for example goes through mild reaction in the in the refrigerator um, because of its nature um, chicken goes through mired um, at about 300 ish um, the higher the temperature the shorter the amount of time you need to reach mired and the shorter the amount of time you need to reach mired you lose less water at the end of the day cooking to sum things up in one sentence and it's gonna make I'm gonna send to to a lot of it but is manipulating moisture we're trying to get things to be in a specific moisture content without or either over drying or drying too little just getting to the right point and we've all had a horrible chicken breast that was just dry as a bone and we tried to chew it and it turned into sawdust and it was just absolutely hideous and we all hated it and we're like why god why um, but if we go high yay potatoes are done if we go high then it allows us to um, get the mired on the outside without losing too much moisture on the inside because mired water at sea level okay all cooking all cooking instructions are less specified otherwise is based at sea level okay water boils at sea level at 212 fahrenheit 100 degrees celsius um, and as long as there's water in the food item it will not get to above that temperature i hope this makes sense um, an what's everything. everything everything so this chicken is 65% water, right? We are 65% water. The skin has a lot of water in it. So by trying to, um, by driving the water out of the skin first in high, so the higher the temperature, whatever's close to the temperature is gonna drive the moisture out first, right? And the water inside is gonna stay. We can reach mired reaction faster um, in high heat. So that's that. Um, okay, moving this cutting board using a clean cutting board. Because, you know, Corona. Corona, not just, chicken. Chicken. Uh, and I'm going to just drain these potatoes. What are the best practices with this again? As far as contamination and what happens if you aren't uh, careful? So, in our digestive tracts, we have what is known as salmonella. Salmonella is, I'm going to say a virus, but I'm not sure. It's a contaminant that is bad for you. It, it will kill you. Um, now, chicken, because of the way it's harvested, um, has a higher chance of its um, digestive system being con being um, disrupted and bursting out salmonella to the actual chicken meat that we eat. Um, and that is bad. If, if I wasn't clear till now, that is bad. So um, we want to avoid that. So we use different cutting boards and different, and because Unlike bigger animals, and not entirely true, but unlike bigger animals, we eat, usually get a, a, at least a quarter of a chicken cooked at a time, right? Either the whole leg or the thigh. It's, it's a big portion of it. Um, if we eat a steak, if you think about it, and I know it's hard to wrap your head around it, but a steak is just a part of a bigger muscle, right? And if we roast the bigger muscle, it's part of the, like, you're not going to eat a quarter cow you're most likely you're, you're not gonna eat a quarter lamb um so me, bro. what Ten, try me bro <laughs> we'll we'll do that at some point okay so potatoes um i would recommend for them to for you guys to wait for them to be cold but i have chef hands so don't do what i do do what i say it has nothing to do with flavor just safety yeah just don't burn your hands um and i'm just cutting them in half and I 
I'm just, man, these are hot. You would think they just came out of an oven or boiling water. And I'm just cutting them in half, super simple, super easy. Um, and if you notice, from now on, we're not going to add any more salt or hardly any salt because we seasoned heavily when we started. Um, and that's my biggest thing for seasoning as a whole. Um, I like to season at the beginning heavily and very lightly, if needed, um, towards the end. So if you work with a lot of salt at the beginning, um, you need less salt later on. OK. How many viewers are we up to? 38. Hey! 39. 39! Make Who's 40. Share, share the video, guys. Share the video. Yeah, do a watch party. I actually joined a watch party the other day on Facebook. Didn't know it's a thing. You can wave at people. Did Ethan share it on his Facebook? I shared it on my Facebook, and I shared it on Blossom Catering Company's Facebook, and I shared it to a bunch of groups on... on no, share the actual live video. Oh, uh, could you pretty please? I will. Thank you. That's another thought is maybe Forno Piambo can post some Instagram stories with you guys' version of this once you guys have followed the instructions that Yamar is giving us today. So, you know, that's going to be fine for now. I'll cook the, the rest of them later. So, um, uh, in the preparation for all this, we said um, get three cast irons or whatever. It's fine if you just use a regular pan for this one. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, I have, this is some canola oil. That's another question. Cast iron versus a normal pan. OK. Cast, why do we use pans? Let's start with that. Uh, oh, you know, why do we use metal pins? The reason that we use metal, and the reason that people like copper, is that metal is a great conductor. And we want to conduct the heat from wherever the source is to the food, right? So when we conduct the heat, we want the best conductors. Copper, wonderful conductor. Wood, kind of a horrible conductor. So we make our pans out of whatever it is that we can, that can conduct the best heat. So a stainless steel is actually a really good pan. The difference in using cast iron versus um, a stainless steel pan, which camera should I use? Whichever. I'm going to go with Vince. Um, the reason for using cast iron is because it's heavy, which also means that it retains heat in it. So what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm placing the potatoes cut side down in the pan. And I'm trying to cram as many as I can in there at one time. Now, the reason that we do that, again, going into um, surface areas, and, uh, and I'll go back. I know I'm, I'll, I remember the question. I'll come back to it in a second. Um, we want as much um, surface area touching the pan um, so it can get conducted with heat um, to, so it will crisp up. OK, so we have beautiful potatoes in canola oil. The reason that we use cast iron versus regular stainless steel, this is way heavier. By being heavier, it retains heat in itself. Um, and by retaining heat, when we put something cold in it, the chicken, for example, or whenever we manipulate moisture uh, temperature in it, it retains that heat and it doesn't lose it. Um, a thin, flimsy pan just loses the energy because it conducts all the energy that it has into the cold item, and then it gets cold, and it tries to grab heat from somewhere. The cast iron will try and transfer as much of the heat as it can, but it retains a lot of it to itself. So here's what we do now. We're going to go out to the oven. So another, another question, because this is actually, I've been cooking a lot more in my, my wood-fired oven. There you go. I'm sure these other people have the same questions. Any, any benefit to heating the pan up before you would put like, these potatoes in, for instance? What, why do you So OK, this is actually a good question, because if we were to use it in a, if we were to do it in our regular oven, not in the wood oven, 
um, I would have this hot before I put the potatoes in. The, uh, the wood oven is so hot that the metal in here is going to grab all the energy and it's going to transfer it really, really fast. Um, but if we were to go in a regular convection, convention oven, um, just get the pan hot before you put it in. And then put the oil and then put it in. OK, so one thing that we are doing, if you, if you want, you don't have to. Um, not going to do that because it's dirty. But you can put a brick on it if you wanted. Um, I'm going to wash my hands now. Because you know, Corona. Corona and, and just sanitary. I know. I was into hand soap before it was a thing. Before it was a trend. Thank God. <laughs> what about seasoning your cast iron? What about seasoning your cast iron? That is important to do because otherwise they rust. So seasoning your cast iron. Um, you know, before we go out, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to do that now. Oh, coming back in a second. I'll just get a good shot of the potatoes. Get a good shot of the potatoes in the meanwhile. Um, I have 250 grams of sourdough starter in here that I'm adding to my bread. And then I have 20 grams of salt. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start just mixing that up, letting that go. And if you notice what I'm doing, I'm going from the outside in. It smells good. What, do I, what am I smelling? It smells like amaretto or something. You smell the sourdough. Hmm. Sourdough starter. Smells good. I want to put some in a cocktail. Uh, we, we, we can try. So okay. you were saying you, you're enjoying bread. What, is there any specific bread besides sourdough that you've been experimenting with? Just this. Okay. I, I really like the flavor of sourdough, and I think it makes for the best grilled cheese sandwiches, which is my favorite food group. What cheeses? Um, so mozzarella for stretch, um, Emmental for flavor, cheddar for color, and Parmesan for saltiness. Um, someone did ask about ca uh, cast irons or just pans in general. What sizes should they be doing it? All of them. Be? All sizes? Whatever fits. What? Okay, yeah. Um, as, as she said, whatever fits. <laughs> um, so these are... Medium to large. These are medium to large. I mean, if you look over there, we have some really big ones. Yeah. That we're not using that one today. But a lot of them come in sets. So this one actually comes as part of a set. Uh, this one and a smaller one. OK, so on my dough, just kind of shaggy. Not really good looking. That's going to wait for another 30 minutes. And in another 30 minutes, we're going to do this again, what I just did, folding it in. And we're going to do that a total of six times. So we're not going to see all six times today. And then at the end of the sixth time, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put it in the fridge overnight to let it uh, ferment overnight. And then tomorrow, we're going to shape them into loaves and break them. Now let's go to the oven. All right. And the reason we're going to talk about that out, out there. Let's go. Let's go, Vince. All right, we'll see if I don't get caught on. Vince, don't fall. Do they have insurance here? I don't know, but I'm promising one thing. If you do fall, I'm going to laugh at you first. Yeah. I'm going to help you after, but I'm going to laugh at you first. That can really help me out. <laughs> OK, so we got a nice big fire here. I'm going to move this to the side. So we're going there. Good. Uh, so, nice big fire. Thank you, Tony, for building a fire. Moving into the back. Okay. Now, there are several schools of thought on where people like their fires and how do they want their fires built. I personally like the fire in the back of the oven for the sole reason that it gives me more surface area at the front. So brushing all this off, good job. 
oven is at about 700-ish. Can you take a wild guess which hand goes, for, goes into the oven more often? The one with the hair or without, the one without it? Potatoes go right over here. Chicken goes right in here. And now is the part that we wait again. Um, but you can get, so potatoes go a bit closer into the oven, into the fire, because we do want them to really crisp up and be beautiful. Um, the chicken needs a bit further back because it's, it's gonna burn otherwise. Uh, we don't want it to burn, we want it to be just beautiful. So, social distancing, hand sanitizer. I don't have a sink out here, so I'm gonna use hand sanitizer more often. However, we don't really touch the food here as much. So how long are these potatoes gonna go and how long is the chicken gonna go? Is it different? Uh, potatoes can go up to about 30 minutes. Um, we just want them to crisp up and be beautiful. Chicken will take about 15, 20 minutes-ish at this temperature. I mean, you can already, does your camera record the sound? Mm -hmm. Do you hear the sizzle? Hear the sizzle. Um, and that's what we want. We want those potatoes to sizzle nicely. Um, one thing that I really like, and is important to work with whatever oven it is that you use, um, we're back on this one, um, is two towels. I know it's, I'm, 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 it's a new found. No one knows about it yet. Towels. Um, super simple, super cheap towels. No oven mitts, no, like, don't burn yourself, basically. But uh, when we work with the oven, so, I mean, that oven is right now at about 750. That's not even as hot as it usually goes. Usually we run it at about 850, 900. Um, and oven mitts burn. And you think you're safe with the oven mitt, and you're not. You're, you're going to burn yourself really bad. Um, towels, good non-plastic, not the microfiber, simple cotton towel. We take it, we fold it in half, we fold it in half once more, and we fold it in half once more. And this is what we use to touch anything that comes out of the oven. I can put this on the handle, move the chicken. Chicken is already starting to look beautiful. Now we have a question. Go ahead, question. So someone's doing a second chicken with jalapeno, first jalapeno, should they season that differently? Um, I would put the jalapeno, um, I would cut it into strips. So basically what is known in French as a julienne, and then put that under the skin of the chicken. So make a cavity between the skin of the, between the, skin of the, of the chicken and the breast or the thigh, and shove those jalapenos in there. Uh, if you go in jalapeno, also go a bit of lime zest. Just peel of lime, peel it with a peeler, and shove that in there, um, and basically you're getting a beautiful chicken. Um, Herbs can, can do the same thing, uh, but I like herbs on the outside because I want them crisp. Jalapeno burnt for me is not really that appetizing. Um, if you want to, what you can do um, is wait about five, 10 minutes and then throw the jalapenos underneath the chicken and they're gonna baste in that chicken and gonna be delicious. But that's whole jalapenos. And is there any difference to cooking a whole chicken versus just pieces? Not really, it's roughly the same. Um, oh man, look at these potatoes. So you see, basically we're frying in the oven. And you see this wiggle? This wiggle is good. That means that there's oil, a fine layer of oil between the potatoes and the pan. And that's good for us. So one thing when you do cook with live fire, be conscious of where things are. It's not like the regular oven that will go pretty steady, hot, hot spot, cold, uh, cold spot are pretty even. Here it will change as the fire dies down, as it goes up, the, the ovens will change. So what was cold at first might be colder now. What was hot earlier can be cold now. What was cold earlier now that you threw a log 
closer to there might get hotter. So what's the most accurate part of the fire to test the, to see how hot it is? Where, where should you be checking? You should be looking at, at the food. Okay. You should be looking at the food. I got that one. So, you know, it's a good question and I do want to address it. So we tell people, oh, get your oven to 700, get your oven to 800, 900, 1,000, whatever it may be. And it's, uh, you know, there is no, um, you know, obviously exact temperature gauge. You know, you might be 700 on this side away from the fire, but closer to the fire, you're like 900. So, you know, the best thing to do, if you have a laser thermometer gun, you would want to hit like four spots in the oven on the actual dome, right? So you kind of hit the dome halfway up by the fire, a little further out, a little high, and then hit the floor and get a general average. But at the end of the day, when we're cooking at this temp where it's, you know, 700 all the way up to 900, it's you can do the same things it's just the time is going to be maybe a little bit less yeah and, right and you know it, it's enough that the chicken is a quarter pound lighter right and the time is going to be different right it's enough that you cook your potato five like 30 seconds longer in boiling water or that if you're at altitude if you're in altitude it's a diff completely different story so then bring the camera in again on the oven and i'll show you as a reference right as a, as a reference point it might be hard to see, but this oven isn't fully cleared, right? It's clearing in certain spots on the dome, but a lot of it is black. This is about 700. When you are fully cleared and there's a raging fire and you cannot see any black soot in the dome, that's more like 950. So that's another way you can tell basically is, you know, is there some black soot on there? Yes, okay, is the fire not raging, but it's, it's decent, right? That's, you're more around 750 at that point, and then when you're raging hot, fully clear dome, I think you're more around 900. What was that? Look at these buttons. When you use Did my mic pick up? Mm -hmm. Remember earlier when I was seasoning the chicken? Then. Um, if, so what I would do if I would do lemon, slide, just peel with a peeler the lemon, so you have just the zest, a nice strip of the zest, put it underneath the skin, cut the lemon in half, and put it underneath the chicken, so the chicken kind of rests on it, so it steams up towards it and perfumes it like that, and you have the, the essential oils coming in from the skin of the, of the lemon into the chicken itself. Um, yeah, that's when you season was when I seasoned the whole thing, so. And if you use herbs, same thing? Same thing. Same thing. It's all it's all seasoning with the salt at the same time. So our chicken is looking beautiful. We're getting beautiful crispy skin. Potatoes are looking beautiful. Um, they are actually crisping up a bit too much on the upside and not as much on the on below. Don't reach with your fingers into a hot oil pan. You just did. Don't do that. That's a stupid move. Don't don't. That's a stupid move. Don't do this. It's uh, you use something, like a knife or something to look at it. But if you look, it's not really. The the, chef hands. Yeah, chef hands are are dumb. So that's oil in there, correct? That is oil in there. So we're gonna go back in here. Is there anything else you can use besides oil? Like I've always thought, would it taste good to do truffle oil and do potatoes like that, maybe? Or I wouldn't do any flavored oils um, because the flavor will burn off. When we work anything over 350, you know, everything, anything over 300, really, um, the f the aromas of truffle, the aroma, it just goes away. Um, so what kind of oil do you generally use in this stuff? So we use um, three different oils. We have um, grapeseed oil for. Oh, thank you. Well, isn't that cute? Um, we have grapeseed oil for um, high temperature, non-flavorful. So this, I use canola on this one, but grapeseed oil would work just as fine. Grapeseed oil would be better, actually. You can get grapeseed oil at Trader Joe's. They have great stuff. Um, and then you can go, uh, we use blend oil for when we want to saute in olive oil, because um, we want the flavor of olive oil, but we want the high temperature of canola. And then we use um, extra virgin for flavoring of just toss this in the salad, stuff like that, uh, that we don't need high heat on. Why are the potatoes in the stainless and the chickens in the cast iron? That was a question for the viewers. Um, or is there no real reason? There is no real reason. 
Um, I would probably, if this was, if I wasn't demonstrating, I wanted to demonstrate that you can use this. I wanted to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be a cast iron because not everybody has 15 cast irons at, at their disposal. I know that, that that's surprising, but we have 15 of them. You guys don't, so you can use a cast iron for the chicken. If you don't have cast iron, you can use a sheet pan. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, don't use wood, basically. And I'm saying that because I've, I've had somebody come to me, hey, can I use a, I have this beautiful wooden tray. Can I use that to roast in the oven? No, dummy. That is how you burn your beautiful wooden tray. Someone's asking, are you preparing something special for Passover? I am. Actually, so when this whole virus thing happened, like, okay, going back to Passover in a second. This chicken is coming out beautiful. So it's not, we shouldn't freak out when we see this flat. No, that's fine. We don't want it, but it's not the end of the world if it happens. It's just nice and crispy. Are you going to start cooking differently at this point because it's being a little flat? So I'm pulling it out a bit. I'm yeah. pulling it to the, towards the edge. I swapped it out with a, the with a potatoes, so the potatoes are now further in. The chicken is further out. And if you notice, we started off this direction, mm -hmm. and now we're cooking this direction. So the thighs that we want to get um, higher temperature on are closer to the fire. Um, as a whole, um, use the temperature, if you have a wood oven, use the temperature of the oven, not the temperature of the fire. Um, going back to Passover, and then I'm going to go back to this. Uh, for, so for Passover, we were supposed to have to cater our Passover um, dinner for Passover Seder for our congregation here. And um, that, that got canceled because uh, the average age is relatively high and um, the average number was about 120 and we didn't want to kill people. Um, so we are doing drop-off menus for Passover. Um, look up Blossom Catering Company and um, send us an email. We, I'm gonna post it tonight probably, but we are doing Passover drop-off menus for uh, groups of four or six or eight or 10 or 12, however many you want. Um, and you can order it and we'll drop it off in a, in a insulated com container right at your doorstep. And we don't have to even have to see you and pay with a credit card so we don't have any coronavirus exchanges. Um, what were we talking about, cast irons? Um, I think the question of why was one in one the potato oh yeah, so that's that's that. Yeah. Um, I think we're also talking about the temperature of the chicken and yes. how you're rotating it. Yeah, so we're rotating the chicken. We're getting it um, evenly cooked throughout. Um, yeah, it's just a waiting game at this point. What, you can talk about like how long you've been cooking with these. Yeah, uh, we can talk about. It. Oh yeah, talking about that's what I wanted to talk about. Catching the oven. Um, using the heat from the oven and not from the fire. Um, in a conventional oven, you don't have the problem because you only base, base your heat on the fire, right? The oven heats up, you turn it off, the oven turns down. If you want to bake at 500, you set it to 500 and that's it. Using a live fire, um, especially on a good oven, which this is a really good oven, um, what you want to do is, these are done. Um, ooh, they smell good. Smell this. Can I? I would not touch them, but they smell delicious, right? Um, so the brick itself stores a lot of energy. It stores a lot of heat in it. Um, that's why I got this, the sourdough bread going. Tomorrow, I'm going to bake in this oven without a fire. I'm just going to throw the, the loaves of bread in it and going to bake bread in the oven uh, just naturally from the heat of the oven. So when you cook, you want your fire to be just about where we are right now. If you want to take a look at the fire, if you see it from over there, I think you see it. Um, it's just basically one or two logs burning um and everything else is is just ambers and that allows radiant heat from the brick itself to be to be heating um and that's what we want okay chicken is coming along nicely 
you can still see the thighs are almost there. It's come closer, Vince. You see this? Yeah. You can see in the middle that it's not quite there yet. So we're going to let it go for a bit longer. Hey, I invited people to come cook with me. I didn't say it's going to be quick. <laughs> questions? Any questions? Where are, okay, who's our latest viewer and where are they from? Um, Lori Piombo from Napa Valley. Lori Piombo from... <laughs> she wasn't watching from the beginning? <laughs> She's been. Uh, no, recent. <laughs> Let's see. Everyone's been on there. We have 40 viewers. Yay, 40. They've been on there. Post yeah. the party. Maybe, why don't you post where you're from? And we'll come back and see who the furthest person away is. Who the furthest away is. We'll try to calculate that. But let us know in the comments where you're from. Or if you have questions. Or want to see me flex. Whatever. How long have you been working with the Forno Piombo? I've been working with Forno Piombo. Oh, wow. Um, the first time we rented one was January of 2016. So four years. Um, I've met Tony, uh, when did I meet Tony? Careful Vince, so you don't burn yourself on this. Um, I've met Tony in, uh, August of 2015, I want to say, um, or maybe somewhere around there. Um, and was just really, he's a, he's a nice guy. He doesn't want to think of himself that way, but he's a nice guy. And, and Guy, his father is, is even nicer. And for me, that's the biggest thing. It's, it's how, who the people are, how they handle themselves, and then what's the quality of the ingredient. So Phoenix, uh, we have wood-fired fanatic from Phoenix. From and Phoenix. We have Allison from Portland. Which is further. I think, I think Phoenix is further because we're in Northern California. Oh, we have someone in Ohio. Yeah. Ohio. Who's from Ohio? Uh, Ohio, ask me a question. Okay. Danielle, ask me a question. How are you, Danielle? What are you up to today? Let's see. How long does a sourdough loaf take to cook in the wood fire oven? I don't know. The short answer is the short answer is I don't know. Um, I've only baked in, in my conventional oven right now. I uh, was waiting for a good fire in the oven, and now that we have one, um, tomorrow, if she wants to join my my personal feed, um, I will do a, a live on on that. But the the short answer is I don't know. Are you making a sauce to go with? that lovely bird? I am not making a sauce. Should we make a sauce? Nah. I don't have anything to make sauce with. Really good. Yeah, it's still really good. We could make some a simple butter sauce if we wanted to. Um, should we? What do you think? I'm feeling it. it was, You're feeling is, it? Is it going to be dry or is it going to be nice and moist? The chicken is going to be nice and moist. And what did you season it with? Just salt? Just salt and pepper. Should we do like a simple lemon butter sauce? That'd be good. Okay, that means that you have to get, you're gonna have to come into the kitchen, into the, can you make it to the fridge with me? I can make it to the fridge. Uh, not all the way to the fridge. Not all the way to the fridge. Okay. Um, can you hear me in the fridge? You can see an oven. Uh, I can probably hear you in the fridge. We'll find out. Okay. I'll watch the food. I'll watch the food. Oh wait, we, Mario says uh, we can FaceTime from his laptop and then he can pull that in. Okay. Do you want to FaceTime my phone, Mario? <laughs> way to do it. That's the way to do it. We're going high tech here. That's what happens when you cook. You just get creative. <laughs> exactly. It's you all about getting creative. I'm waiting for my phone. I'm going to get a call here in a second. <laughs> this chicken is looking mighty fine. Look at this. Look at this. I don't think it gets any better. That looks good. It almost looks like caramelized. It is. So, I don't, I'm not getting the FaceTime from Mario. Yep. Oh, he wants us to see. Going back to our cider real quick. Chicken looks nice. Um, basically, I'm just folding in, kind of mixing it every 30 minutes or so. Tomorrow, right? This is happening tomorrow. So yeah, just folding this in. Beautiful. What's an easy sourdough starter? 
What is what? Easy sourdough starter. A recipe? Yeah. Go to your lo your favorite bakery in town and ask them for a pint. They will give it to you. Um, other otherwise, one, 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water, one jalapeno chopped up. The following day, so mix it up, put it on your shelf. Following day, dump half of that out, so dump 100 grams out, and then add 100 grams flour, 100 grams water, mix it up, put it on your shelf. The following day, dump 100, 200 grams out, add 100 grams water, 100 grams flour, mix it all up. The following day you have sourdough, then pass it through a strainer so you don't have the jalapeno bits, and then add equal parts, so you have one part sourdough starter, add one part uh, by weight flour, one part water. Mix it up, let it sit, following day, put it in the fridge, and then once a week, just feed it. Okay, so. <sighs> Crap. I need a pan. Claudia, could you gra run and grab a pan for us? Uh, medium. Doesn't really matter. Cast iron, copper, or stainless? Stainless. Okay, so. What is the rage about copper pans? They're just easy to get hot? Copper is a really, really good conductor. And when you use copper, it conducts throughout. So you have less um, hot spots in the pan. Um, and when you have less hot spots, you get less burnage. And we don't want burnage. That's a professional term, by the way, burnage. Okay, so this is here. So you shouldn't use non-stick in the pizza oven. Okay. I would not use non-stick in the pizza oven. There is no point. Which we're cooking at low temp. Then why use a pizza oven? Why use a wood oven? You can. Thank you, hun. I'll give it a quick wipe. Okay, so some champagne vinegar. And we're gonna let this go in here. Viewer, Paul Wessler. Um, Schussler, hey, hey, what's up, Paul? He's, like he's on here. Paul says, I said all good chefs make a sauce for their plates. That's what I'm trying to say, Paul, and now he's, now he's on Well, I'm not a good chef. <laughs> You're a great chef. Let's, let's, be on, let's be honest here. He's just trying to be good. You're trying to be great. Paul is one of the best chefs I know, and the fact that, Paul, do you even cook anymore? If he doesn't cook anymore, that's one of the saddest losses to the culinary world. He's a wonderful, wonderful, was a wonderful cook, could have been a wonderful chef, um, and then kind of stopped. Where is he at right now? I think he's somewhere in the Midwest. Love you, Paul. Miss you. Someone's asking, um, does the fire burn out with the door on overnight, then you bake the bread in the AM? So um, the fire, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a couple of logs and then I'm going to shut the door. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to create um, an oxygenless environment for the fire. So it's not really going to burn. It's going to turn into charcoal and it's going to keep the oven hot. But mostly we're going to be cooking with the remain with the residual heat from the brick. Um, and that's what we're going to be cooking with. Because so when right you. Now the oranges were introduced for the sauce, correct? Oranges are for the sauce. Tangerine. Optional. This is optional. Yeah, this was a surprise. We weren't planning on going to the fridge. Okay. So, champagne vinegar is slowly evaporating here. And we're going to juice these tangerines in here. And we're gonna juice some more tangerine in here. We're gonna juice some more tangerine in here. But tangerine vinegar? Tangerine and champagne vinegar. Usually I would use lemon juice um, and just lemon juice, but we don't have lemons. So um, tangerine ha has, is way sweeter. It's not as acidic. So, um, supplementing the acidity 
on that we don't have from the lemon with with the um, champagne vinegar. So now we're going to put this really close to the fire because we want to evaporate as much as we can. So you see this one is really, really far in there. Probably the farthest we've had anything. It's going to start boiling in a second. You could, if this is something that you do on a regular basis, you could have the, as, a, as, a, as a side fire. So instead of having a back fire like we have here, you could have a side fire and then you just literally put it on the coals. Um, to smell good. It does. The chicken looks beautiful. Chicken is basically done. Potatoes are great. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. This one's for cameraman. This one's for cameraman. Oh, it's really good. Crispy on the outside. Crispy on the outside. And you still have a nice soft inside. Maybe a little more salt though. Could use a little bit more salt. I think so. It's very good though. It's delicious. I, I, I'm not disagreeing on the salt. Or some kind of herb, maybe like a rose, rosemary would be good with it. Could you, that's the thing. I wanted to keep it very basic. You could season this with whatever you wanted. Exactly. That, that's it's the a whole, very, but you're right. It's at a perfect base to do whatever you yeah. want with it. I mean, you can go garlic and rosemary. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so good. Black truffles. Ooh, that would be good. That would be good. Um, you could do what you can do whatever you want. How would you spice those up if you like like chili? Um, Calabrian chili. Ooh, we should do that. Calabrian chili. Well, that would be good. I think we're going to do another FaceTime call and raid the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Did Paul answer to anything that I asked him? Yeah, what did Paul say? Paul's responding a lot. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Paul is, uh, he, he says, the glaze the chicken pan, you the best. Michigan misses you, you are welcome. I love this. Balance <laughs> the sweet, eat the bird on the potatoes. He's loving this. He is loving this. And we are going to deglaze the, you know what? That's what we're going to do. Good call, Paul. Good call. <laughs> we're going to do this. So, this is what is known as fond. Fond is all the flavor from the chicken that went to the pan. And we don't want to lose that. So, we're doing this. We're scraping all this goodness. Paul, you should be here cooking with me. I miss you, buddy. It's on the potatoes. Could you get us um, two big plates? Yeah. Platters? Uh, no, big plates. They're on the end of the line. Yeah, that chicken's going to be good. And I'm going to throw another log on the fire, just for good measure. That's something that a lot of people are afraid to do, is throwing logs while they cook. It's like, oh, I'm going to mess it up. Nah, you're not. So another question is, uh, why are you cooking on a wood-fired oven right now? Because I like the flavor. I like the intense heat. Beautiful. I like the intense heat. I like the flavor that it gives. I like the rusticness of it. And I like the fact that it requires skill. I like the fact that this of it, while I am teaching other people how to do, it, it, you can't do it on, you, can't, you won't nail it on the first time. I need sanitizer now that I scratched my head. Um, you're not nail, gonna nail it on the first time. You're gonna, you're gonna just practice and get better and practice and get better. And that for me is, is the essence of it. It's, it's being able to do something and get better at it. You know, if, if you sous vide, which don't get me wrong, I love sous vide, but you set the temperature and it's gonna, cook, it's gonna do it for you. If you, I mean, classic example, microwave popcorn, right? Everybody can microwave popcorn. But doing this requires some skill, requires some know-how. And also, and I was saying that earlier, and we were doing that with the, with the potatoes when we were measuring, and 
it, you need to have the feel in your hand. And that for me is why I can charge money for my cooking. And why as a catering company we can charge money for what we do because we have really, really good people who have that hand. They touch something and it's not anybody touching it. It's, it's them and it's their ability. And that's why I love cooking in a wood-fired oven. Um, the same is true about a regular oven and this whole recipe. If you are afraid of high heat and you're gonna do it at 350, it's gonna come out. You're gonna get chicken and potatoes at 350. But you're not gonna get this. And every time you make it, it's gonna be different. And every time you do it, it's gonna get better. And that's, that's why I like cooking with a wood-fired oven. Okay, so these have been reducing. Yes and no. It's it's very primitive and very sophisticated at the same time. One of the earliest forms of cooking. Yeah, it is definitely an early form of cooking, but it it still requires a lot of skill. This needs to be reduced more. You know, on the wall of the French Laundry, um, which is a very famous restaurant here in Napa, in Yonville. Um, there is the definition of finesse, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it is, but that's what it is. This is very, I mean, at the end of the day, cooking, manipulating moisture, heat, no heat, that's it. It's super simple, yet there are masters who do it for years, and I'm not claiming to be one by any means. I am the furthest from it. But if you look at Thomas Keller, he's been doing it for... 50 years now? I don't even know how long he's been cooking. The French Laundry has been around for almost 30 years now. And that is manipulating moisture just as everybody that's, cook I hope somebody's cooking this at home right now, but that's, that's what it is. He's doing the same thing you are, just on a different level. Is, is anyone, I wonder if anyone is a person that you could respond in the comments. That might be interesting to you can try to do it or something and see how your progress is. Okay, so come take a quick look at this. Look at how beautiful this is. This has been reducing. I'm going to reduce it a tad bit longer. Then we're going to start mounting it with butter. And then this we're just trying to keep warm? This we're just resting. So resting is an important period as well when you cook meat. And by the way, you can do this with the same thing we just did. You can do with a steak. You can do with a fish. You can do with a pork chop. You can do with lamb shoulder. You can do it with whatever you want. The simple cookery of it is the same. Whatever you do with it is different. Um, so, but yeah. Those potatoes and this could be a steak at this, at this time and everybody would be very, very happy with that. Okay, so look at this. This is exactly where we want it. Now is the fun part, butter. And from this point on, I am not stopping shaking this pan until I'm done adding all the butter. That's gonna be a lot of butter. If you don't want to shake the pan, I brought a whisk, you can whisk. But basically what we want to do is we want to emulsify the butter into those liquids. Look at this beautiful sauce. Could you grab us a spoon? And the salt. So if I need more heat, I'm putting it into the oven a bit. This is food porn of its best right now. All these waviness. Thank you. And if you don't mind grabbing the salt off my table. And that's the difference, right? That's what I can do, and I'm showing you guys. That's, that's the finesse. 
Now, if we were at the French Laundry, we would probably strain it. I don't think we're going to do that, though. No. What does Paul say about the sauce? Yeah, Paul, what do you think of it? Okay, so we want to be... Do we get any comments about anyone trying to follow along at home at, at this point? Yeah, we have like five people right now. That are cooking this that actively? Cooking this. That's hey, beautiful. Tony, we should try to FaceTime one of them in. Is Tony listening? Okay. So, there's our sauce and look at that, now that is a beautiful sauce and we're going to stop now because it's starting to break on us, we don't want the sauce to break. So when we see that it's starting to separate, I'm just going to transfer it to a different pan so it's not too hot. and add one more knob of butter just to cool it down to emulsify it back beautiful okay i think we're ready to eat so are we on a wide shot mario yeah. Ooh, that's good Beautiful. It's gonna go right here. That's gonna go here. Now I have a messy station because of the sauce, but that's fine. Organic matter can go in the oven, it burns. Although. Uh, Nama would say that we should be composting it. We should be composting it, but it also burns. Okay, so chicken. Where is my chicken? Okay. Beautiful. Right, probably want to get a shot. Legs come off now. Okay, Vince, one plate for you, one plate for me? Yep, that's all we need. Beautiful. So. We should also save some for Paul. We should. Paul, come over and grab some chicken. I'm on, I'm on your camera, I'm just sick away. Okay, this one is a bit under. So we're gonna put this into the oven for a bit. Can it get tricky putting something back into the oven? Nope. Pretty basic, you don't Pretty basic. Have to worry about doing something differently. Nope. And that's why we check and we look and don't assume that it's done just because it's, it looks like it. No, this one is done. So this breast. So how do we know it's done? Stringy or? Uh, basically color. If you look at, see the difference between this one has a still a bit of pink not quite there this one completely opaque all the way through that's how we know cool. i'm going to cut it a thicker part as well here just to double check yeah we're cooked through here that's beautiful so we're going to plate this one up we're going to put this one in the oven just a tad bit longer so plating up we're going to plate vince's first Potatoes, because we put so much effort into crisping them up. We're gonna do this for them. And I do agree with you, they need a bit of salt. Beautiful. Glad my taste buds work. Then this goes on like so. This goes on like so. So how many servings does this do? If this is a like four a serving. And, uh, a bird as a whole is four servings. Got it. And some of our tangerine sauce.
There we go. It's good. That looks very, very good, Itamar. It's as if I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Almost. Paul did help you. Paul did help a lot. Thank you, Paul. The sauce was definitely a good point. Yeah. Explain the sauce a little bit. Sauce. So, sauce is a play on a classic beurre blanc. What is beurre blanc? What is butter? <laughs> Let's start with what is butter. Butter is an emulsion of um, fat, milk solids, and water. Okay? Good butter would be about 83% fat, about 1% milk solids, about um, 15, about 15 to 16% um, water. Now, when we when we do the when we um, when we shook the the sauce, the reduction that we had in the pan with the butter, what it created was it, it extended that emulsion into the liquid that was already in the pan. And while that was uh, evaporating, it was thickening up. So emulsion, the higher the fat percentage in, in, in an emulsion, the thicker the emulsion is. So mayonnaise, if anybody's here and ever, has ever done a mayon made a mayonnaise, very little water, a lot of a lot of fat. Now, when I say water, it can be anything that's water soluble. Okay, so vinegar, lemon juice, um, tangerine juice, like we did here, um, anything that's water soluble. So, what we did in the sauce here, we deglazed the pan, so we lifted all the good fond that was in the in the cast iron. We lifted that up with champagne vinegar and tangerines, uh, tangerine juice. We let that reduce so we don't have too much water in it. Because um, when we evaporate, only the water escapes flavor concentrate. And then we added the butter. The butter, the water in the butter helped um, help with the, with the liquids. And it got thicker and thicker until we got this beautiful, beautiful sauce right here. Um, that you guys, I mean, you saw earlier, it was just coating, just coats beautifully on the spoon. And this is just absolutely delicious. And if it separates, what do you do? Try not to, because it really sucks when it does and it's hard to come back. Um, this one started separating. As soon as it started separating, I took it off the heat. You notice I changed pans to the, cast, to the stainless steel pan and I added some cold butter to help it um, cool down and emulsified that and started the emulsion back. Um, if it separates, it sucks, uh, but that's just practice. You do that again and again. When I had my fifth term practical, the final exam, the final cooking exam at, at CIA, um, my sauce broke and it sucked. Who's that? Hey! Hey! Okay. We're getting feedback. I <laughs> there we go. No, no, I, I need, I need. How do I mute my mic? I don't think I can. Oh no, that, I hear myself back from there. Hey there. Hey Lori, hey guy. I'm good. <laughs> Are you guys cooking chicken right now? That's beautiful. I we were trying to keep it simple. I would probably definitely do asparagus on this one. Um, yeah. Something green. It needs something green. Um, broccoli would be better than than asparagus, but asparagus is a good call. Um, yeah, we have some asparagus. But can I just tell you something? Yes, ma'am. I, I am I am so loving being able, able to do this in our own kitchen with you. It's a game changer for us because we're in our own. We can reproduce it by ourselves because we've already done it the one time, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's a great idea. Thank you guys for coming up with this. Pleasure's all mine. You know this now. It's now it was worth it. Now the whole yeah. thing was worth knowing that some that one person did it. That's worth it. And talking to Paul. I 
think there's quite a few people that are oh, doing it. I'm sure there are. I think we should all post our meals before yeah. we eat them. Please uh, do. You know, post yeah, them in the comments. Post Everyone them po- in the comments. Post them in the comments uh, when you finish. Eat them more real quick. I just want to thank you for setting the record straight about the uh, gloves and mittens. Just don't use those. It's, it's the uh, <laughs> towels. You get them at Home Depot and you can reuse them. And also, and also that, yeah, I am nicer than Tony. I mean, he's a nice guy. <laughs> I am I'm nicer than Tony. So. Oh, you're, break, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Well, we can't hear you. Well, good to see you, you again, Lori. This makes me very day. happy. We need to get together once this is whole. Yeah. This whole thing blows over. Right. You, can, you can cook your bread over here tomorrow if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I might send Tony over no, with a loaf. Edamar, you forgot to mention one important thing before we started. Yeah. Be open your. Because no, no, you're not supposed to drink when you cook. Yes, oh, a little wine, bit of wine. Was yeah, a bottle of wine would have been helpful here, definitely. Just a little bit. Anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, this, has you, been, this has been awesome. Here's our asparagus, too. We will post a complete plate before we chow down. Beautiful. All right. Okay. Bye. Peace Bye. out. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Love you. Should you guys do a little sign-off, I think? Yeah, yeah. let's do a sign-off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just flex, and, and we're going to cut off. I'm going to eat no. chicken. <laughs> I'm going to eat some chicken. Uh, let us know that you watched. Let us know that that you had fun. Um, I definitely enjoyed, you know, just these last two phone calls that people actually called in and, and, and cooked this thing uh, makes me very happy. Um, yeah, it was fun. That was yeah. fun. And I think uh, so. This was our first one. Obviously, I think it went pretty well. And, and uh, you know, we, I think everyone had a lot of fun and hopefully learned something and were able to cook along. Um, the goal here is uh, we want to keep doing this, but um, you know we want to charge a small fee and we want to give all of the proceeds from that to our friends like Itamar and all of these chefs here in Napa who are just, they have no work right now. And, uh, but they have the ability to teach you and to give you something of value, even though it's not directly cooking food for you, they're going to teach you and show you through these classes and help you cook along with them. Um, and I think uh, we'll set something up so that it's easier for us to, I think, show the people at home on video and to interact a little bit more in that sense. Um, but uh, overall, yeah, I think it was great. And I, we definitely want to do it again, hopefully next week. Uh, same time would be great. And, um, you know, we'll get you the recipe again and the time and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, last chance for, for questions, if you have any questions. Um, and oh, make sure you post your pictures in the comments of this video. After the video's over, it'll still be on Facebook, so you can go back, you can post pictures of your chicken um, and tell us how it turned out. So, what else you got? I'm making bread. He's making bread. That was a, so that was a surprise. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> well, I'm at home. That's what you, you know, with the oven, it's gonna be hot for a couple days now. Yeah. Right? So, use the energy, and this makes a really, really good, mean grilled cheese sandwich. Ooh, that sounds... And there's nothing I like better than grilled cheese. Well, there's a lot of things I like. It's hard to say which one I like most. But um, wash we'll, your hands. And we'll do a follow-up video on the bread tomorrow. Um, it, whether it's live or not, we'll, we'll, we'll get some video of it so you can check out yeah. how that went down. Cool? For sure. Okay, sign it off. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank See you. you. Next time. See you next time.